Minasan konnichiwa, this is David. I'm doing a review today of the real grade 1 1 44th Wing Zero Custom Endless Waltz Edition. Um, in beautiful moody morning sunlight. Yes, in beautiful Japanese morning sunlight. Um, as you can see, the shadows across him are majestic. Um, so here he is, full build. Um, I don't have the decals or anything put onto him, um, but he does have a full array of standard RG decals, which are um, admittedly pretty impressive. Um, I will probably take a photo or two of those later once they're done. Um, but as a basic summary, the TLDR version, um, I am very, very impressed with this kit. Um, it is, I mean, I've done uh, quite a few RGs now, and it is one of the better ones. Uh, most of the RGs impress anyway, but this is such a marked improvement over the classic Wing Zero Customs. Um, I've probably built, I'd say about 10 of the HG Wing Zero Customs over the years. Um, the 1100 version, I've built a couple of. Um, I've built at least two of the MG. Um, and back whenever it first came out, I built the PG Wing Zero Custom. Um, and this is way better um, than any of those builds. I'm very impressed with it. So I'm going to go over a little bit of that now. Is for it worth the money? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't actually pay for it, but... No, okay. uh, <laughs> I mean, if somebody were to pay the extra amount to get it in the States, it would be worth it. Yeah, I don't know how much you'd pay for it in the States. Um, I remember when I was buying R um, RGs in the States, I would pay about $35 for them, I think, $30, $35. Oh, really? That's it? Uh, yeah, may, um, I think maybe I paid 40 for the um, the Ale Strike, but I can't remember. Um, it's it's a great kit. Like, honestly, this is, this is going to last a while. Um, so as far as like articulation goes, it is super articulate. Um, the feet can bend all the way back, uh, or the legs can bend all the way back. Um, it can touch its own butt. Uh, Kicks everybody else's ass and its own ass. You can't see them with the armor in place, but there's actually two tendons in the legs and the arms, um, which add a little bit of range to that articulation there. Just the way the human finger has two tendons. Uh, or the, the human, yeah, yeah, it's the way the human finger has two tendons, but it's also the way that um, the leg does too. Mm. Um, so it's, it's very much like a humanoid uh, robot. Um, the foot will bend all the way down. You can dance point. Yeah, you can dance point. Um, and that's important for one of the, um, the movie poses that he can do. Um, the arms have a kind of ridiculous range of motion. He can shoot up at like a 45 degree angle. Which is useful. Yeah. Um, I'll remove the gun. The guns are actually affixed to the hand really well, so I'm just going to remove the hand to demonstrate <laughs> this. Um, but his elbow will bend all the way up. Um, he can basically go as far as to touch, um, his own shoulder there. So he can play head and shoulders? Yes, he can play head and shoulders, knees and toes. This is an important thing. Um, Stop animation if ever there was one. The head doesn't have a remarkable range because of those giant blue wings on the side of his head, but there's literally like nothing banned I could do about that. Uh, I do like that the little, um, the little Vulcan cannons there open up. Um, they're super detailed, super tiny. Not the Vulcan cannons have ever been useful. Yeah, no. Vulcan cannons, <laughs> I think Char had um, used them well once mm. um, in Zeta. Um, but that's about it. Oh, and um, the Maiji did last night. Or oh, yeah, yeah. Maiji Kawaguchi. Hi. I have to move it back in frame. I will. One second. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put a part back on. Mm. Okay. Um, now, the shoulder pieces are actually on a, um, like on a pivot so they can come outward and tilt. And part of that is so that you can pull them down. Oh, came off. Pull them down um, for his atmospheric re-entry shield mode. Or emo angst mode. Yeah, emo angst mode. Um, 
the wings. Now, here's here's my favorite part, and it should be everyone's favorite part of this kit because it's like half of the build. Um, <laughs> the wings are super, super articulate. Uh, these smaller wings, they actually fold inward. So they have this like array of feathers that comes out. Very dramatic. Yeah, very dramatic. And those are just seamless. They just go. Um, and then these, all of these feathers are individually ball jointed. So they have a nice range of motion. They can do all kinds of shit. You can do a ruffled feather kind of. Yeah, you can ruffle them. Battle scene kind of thing. Yeah, you can spray them out like a cat's, angry cat's hair or whatever. Um, and then these go in. Both of these pieces go in. <laughs> which reveals more feather space. Um, so he can he can really have like very tame wings, mm -hmm. or they can be like out. Super majestic. Super majestic, yeah. Like this angry pants wing zero. <laughs> and they should start using you to name their uh, poses. That's probably a bad idea. Yeah, probably. And then so you can do the um, the atmospheric entry pose. Um, his his wings as a shield. Um, and that works fine. They don't stick together great. Uh, on the um, on the HG kit, um, there's a little peg that holds them together that is not on here. But that, to be fair, is super unsightly on the HG. So mm. that's probably a better choice anyway. And I don't think a lot of people are going to have it in that pose just because it conceals most of the kit. And across the street is our fruit stand. Oh yeah, there's there's our fruit stand. That's where we get our yaki. Hi Hideo. Okay, now the Buster rifles. The Buster rifles are way better in this too, um, which is kind of to be expected. Um, instead of being two pieces down a center seam, they're actually um, the two pieces are there's a frame piece and then you've got like a hood that goes down over it. it has a couple holes to reveal like the hoses and things, which not, is nice. Not too far off from the way Rogan is built either. Um, yeah, it's it's actually not dissimilar, um, but it's it's great because you don't see any unnecessary seams, mm. um, and that's like that's a staple of the H or the RG line but i think it's particularly impressive here now um <coughs> instead of having just little like pegs to and holes to put these two together for the twin buster rifle effect it's got this piece that's like a hinged piece that slides down and it's sort of it it has the pegs and the holes but they're well concealed so there you have the connectors and it's buster buster rifle yeah it's called a buster rifle is this related to like the buster sword is there a reason they use that um, you know, I don't know. It probably, I guess, um, really fucking big is um, a connotation that people in Japan have with Buster. I, I don't know. Um, and then you you connect them for the um, the finale of the Endless Waltz film. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> when in doubt, just take two guns and slap them together. Yeah, well, spoiler alert, alert. This is from the scene where Hiro destroys the Wing Zero oh. um, in a suicide attempt mm. um, that demolishes hundreds of people and basically ends the war in one shot. Mm. Ah. The hands are pretty nice. Um, you get these hands, um, you get splayed out hands, and then you get your standard RG hands. Um, RG hands are super articulate, but for that, they sacrifice a little bit of their ability to hold things, um, which kind of sucks. But, but you can give a thumbs up and that's important. You can give a thumbs up, you can um, you can do all kinds of shit. I have sure shit, like making sure your gun was flipping you off. Yeah, I haven't been able to get his um, this position to work well with the hands. Mm. I'm not sure why that is, because um, I've done it according to the instructions, but I can't get the buster rifle to stay straight uh, when it's in the dead center of the body. Mm. Um, I'll figure that out soon. Uh, I guess it probably has something to do with twisting the arms and the hands. Um, I'll see if I can do it right now. No, not like that. Um, but it's very close. Um, so you can hold the two of them. And 
and he has all those nice options. Um, as well as his buster rifles. These shoulder pieces do come off a little bit, but that's kind of um, because they are so articulate, they have to be able to come off. But they're not terrible to get back on. No, they, they snap right back on. They're There's actually... a couple of pieces like on the bear guy that come off really easily, but then you can't get them back on easily, so it's annoying. Yeah, yeah, this is nothing like that. This is um, very, very well designed. Um, Falling off pieces is not necessarily a bad thing if... No. In a lot of cases, you want them to, just mm. because it's better than breaking them. Yeah, true. Um, and RGs are pretty much ideal in that regard. Okay, so we have beam sabers. Sunlight. Yeah, sunlight, sunlight. Beam sabers. Uh, we have two of them. They are a deep, dark, like almost pine green. Mm. Um, and these would go in the RG hands. I wouldn't put them in the gun hands because um, they have the trigger finger out, and that's kind of dumb for a sword. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess if it was like a katana or something, you would want that finger out knocked, but... Well, if you hold it this way, cut through an onion. Yeah, yeah, context. <laughs> okay, so you've got beam saber. Man, that's what I want. A beam oh, saber? No, I want Elliot to have a gun. Though. It should be a gun. Yeah, I just want Elliot in the house. Yeah. Oh. What it was is I, was, I had the ball joint for the hand folded in so it didn't go in correctly because I wasn't paying attention. Man, this RG hand doesn't really doesn't want to go in. Mm. I don't know why that is, but and of course now I'm like dropping fingers. That's not a euphemism. He literally dropped a finger. Yeah. Be a good euphemism then, for something. I think. The thing is, is that the 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 little ball that holds the hand in place, it's actually jointed, um, so it can go back in whatever angle you want. Mm. And so whenever you're trying to push it into that uh, socket, it slides. One it way or the slides. Other. Yeah, it really is. Um... That's actually a problem a lot of the SDs have. Yes. The shoulder piece always does that because the shoulder piece has to have very similar slidey articulation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I got one on there. Ironically, that was that's been the hardest thing to put on so far is that hand. Do we have oh we have a SD burning sitting around, right? The SD burning gun? Yeah, yeah, we just got that. It hasn't haven't built it yet though. Mm, I might steal that and do it. That's a good idea. And let's see. The other one is also having trouble popping in. And there's nowhere really to hold the hand. Because mm. if you hold it on the fingers, the fingers slide out of the way. Uh, and you can hold it on the back of the hand, uh, but you don't have anywhere to grip it. Like, you need two spots to grab it. And then the other saber fell out. So, so far, this is the most disappointing part, the RG hands. But... This has been universally the case in pretty much all of my RG kits. I hate these things. They're pretty, they, they are very articulate, but they don't actually hold shit. Mm. And you want them to hold shit. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, in summation, um, except for the stupid ass RG hand not being able to hold anything, I have been very impressed. Uh, I still don't know how to get it to do the um, the twin buster rifle effect, um, at least in the way that the photos show. Um, not sure about that. I don't know what's so going on. So if you on. get this kit and you get the buster rifle to work, record a video of it, upload it on YouTube, and share it with us. Yeah, so link us see. to it so we can figure it out. I mean, it, <laughs> the the directions on the um, on the the booklet actually explain how to do it, but and I've read them. It makes perfect sense to me, but it doesn't work that way. Um, the, the, the rifle ends up not being straight, so I don't know. And you said he's shorter comparative. To... Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me show you. Let me show you. Um, wing kits are shorter than any other kits. Because um, they're for teenagers. No. It's teenage not... pilots, right? No, I mean, they're all teenage <laughs> pilots. But no, it's, it's just that wing kits are smaller to scale. Mm. If you'll see there... Um, it's, there's about a half inch between it and the Astrea. 
Which would be quite a difference in reality. Yeah, so that's where the Astrea stands mm -hmm. in comparison to the Wing Zero. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's, it's got a good half inch. Um, wing kits are just smaller. The, the, wing, um, the wing Gundams are uh, significantly shorter than your average Gundam. Um, maybe that's why Hero is so bitter. <laughs> Well, okay, so so he's you know a little shorter, big thick legs, can dance on point, um, covered in feathers. This is basically the black swan of yeah. Uh, this is a ballerina, and here is um your hero Yoi, um, immensely tiny. Uh, you can barely see that it is hero Yoi. Um, he has his trademark annoying hair. <laughs> um, but there we go. There's the R G. Wing Zero Custom Endless Waltz Edition. Um, put those beam sabers. The beam sabers actually go back on the wings as well, uh, which is kind of a nice effect. Um, they don't do that on the HG Wing Zero. I can't remember if they do it on the MG. I don't have an MG Wing Zero anymore. Haven't had one in a good number of years, so I can't remember. Oh, but it is... Um, it is a marked improvement over every other Wing Zero I've built, and this is the Wing Zero is maybe the most common build I've ever done. So, um, if you like the look of it and you want a Wing Zero, and this you're is, yeah, you're an adult, yeah, so you have the time to put it together. Oh, uh, maybe go with this. Yeah, uh, this isn't even a time consumer. I built it. Um, it took me it took me about two and a half hours, I think. Sure. Um, which is actually. Um, which is actually a little bit of time, um, considering um, what I built in like an HG kit in. Um, it took me a little longer than the Astrea took me, mm -hmm. um, and it took me a little longer than the Ale Strike and the the RG Zaku. Um, so it is a little intensive for an RG, but not much. Um, I built it in two and a half hours, so if it's your first build, it'll probably take you about four or five hours, maybe. Um, it's it's not that bad. It's but it'll do what you want and it'll look fantastic. So if, oh, yeah. if you don't want a big collection of Gundam, if you don't want to build a lot of Gundam for the sake of building Gundam, this might be something to do. Yeah, and unlike the say perfect grade, which would take a lot longer and also take up a lot more shelf space. A lot of money. And a lot of money. This is this is a great bargain buy. If you kind of want the perfect grade. Something. Yeah, the perfect grade is a, is a is a good kit, um, but it also it's a dated kit. Mm. Um, it was one of the first perfect grades. It was, I, I believe, it was the first one that was not um, the RX seventy eight two and the Zaku. Right. So, yeah, but there we go. There's there's our Wing Zero custom. It is lovely. Um, and expect in February, I'm going to be doing the Seraphim Wing expansion for it. So, all right, everyone, matane. Mm -hmm.